how to spend other people's money. I love this topic because I love spending it. You gotta say, well, what are we doing? We're going shopping. No, we are not. We're actually going investing. So OPM is other people's money. Specifically, we're gonna talk about how do you be responsible for it to even qualify to have any, all right? So the three things you absolutely have to know about spending other people's money is what is the forecast in the planning? Like, how are you going to use their funds? And you gotta have that in detail. Number two, how do you build the trust and ensure the transparency so they can actually see their funds being used and how it's being used, what it's being used for? And then number three, we're gonna talk about the biggest pitfalls and the most obvious mistakes that I see people make. And they wonder why nobody else will borrow them money. So get a pen and paper for those of you that are serious. And by the way, if you've not got our YouTube learning journal, it's going to be on every page. Get the journal because inside of it, you get to write down what the video is about, what you learn and what are you going to do? So you start really, really consuming an actionable plan versus just like, hey, that was a really cool video. So how do you actually forecast? How do you actually build this budget? We call it, I call it forecast in this planning. So first of all, what is the money for? Is it to buy real estate? Is it to, what are you going to do with it? Typically OPM is for real estate or other projects? How is the categorization of expenses, which is what we call the use of funds? So are you going to, to buy the land, the building? Are you going to do tenant improvements? Are you going to buy, like we're doing OPM right now for cannabis. So you're going to buy plants. What are you going to buy with the money? And then how are you going to create some structure that they actually know that you're using it properly? And where then number two, do you build transparency? So you got to have an accounting system. I don't know how many people in real estate show up to a real estate investment club and say, oh, I need somebody to be my money partner. A, that's not even appropriate terms. So you need to have a business plan. You need to have an executive summary. Typically, OPM is going to come to what I call management teams, right? Money comes to management. So inside that business plan, you're going to need to talk about your management team. And do you have a resume? Is this the first money that you've ever borrowed? Have you actually shown success on other projects where not only have you taken the money, but you've actually created the return and got it back on time, if not on time, which is forgivable. Economic downturn, COVID created huge note delay for people who are doing OPM. There's also something inside OPM if you need it, which is OPC, which is use their credit. Now that gets a little trickier because if you're using my credit, I'm gonna be responsible for the payment, which means the money's gotta flow through my hands to make sure my credit doesn't get stung because you didn't make a payment on time. But there is some creative strategies around OPC, other people's credit, other people's money, and other people's IRAs. Because there's a lot of money in that category. But if you look at the transparency, you've gotta build it out into an accounting system. You're gonna to have to have spreadsheets. A lot of people actually do what's called called an investor portal. So the project as it progresses actually has you know pictures and videos and cameras so you can actually see the progression and they can actually see what their money's buying. So a lot of FinTech, right, which is financial technology, offers that transparency and you're gonna need to have it. And again, I'm gonna say it over and over, money follows management. So who's on your management team? A lot of people join our community because they want our senior experts, me included, to be on their board, to be advisor, to be somebody that's giving them input because my resume of capital of other people's money is quite lengthy. So management, transparency, all of that's critical. And it's got to be supported by a business plan that you're going to have to come together with. Now, all that being said, I think a lot of you don't realize other people's money is also cheaper at a bank. Now, are there like requirements and applications that are a little more arduous than just doing OPM and a business plan out to hard money lenders? Yeah, but hard money lenders are going to be 12 to 17%. Just yesterday, I was quoted 11 and three, meaning 11% and three points on the front. That's expensive money when I can go to the bank and I can get six, seven, eight percent money. It's just the paperwork's more. So, you know, which which do you want? You're going to have to have that and build a resume. The biggest mistake I see, actually, before I go to the biggest mistakes, but I'll give you one little fast one, is that you don't document your resume, meaning you may have done four or five fix and flips, but you didn't take any pictures. You didn't have any documentation that you did those projects and you left behind your resume. Anything that you do in the space that you're in, you need documentation just to prove that you're sustainable and that you've been out and actually doing the work. So before I go into other costly errors. I want you here five days a week. Subscribe to my channel, click that notification button. And at any point, ask questions at asklaurel.com, A-S-K-L-O-R-A-L, ask questions, make a request, be in our membership, come live and I'll do a money makeover. We'll talk about how we can help you and what really stumbling blocks you have with this. So the big pitfalls that I see is people who 
do OPM and what they're offering is a second position. I mean, I, you're crazy if you take a second position, but you guys can do whatever you want. An investor's crazy to take it because whoever's taking first position is going to take back any money on a default of a note or if an asset defaults. So first position is in my money rules, the only position to take. And then you cannot commingle. You can't rob Peter to pay Paul. You can do interdepartmental and intercompany loans, but you cannot be spending out of your personal bank account investor dollars. First of all, an investor, other people's money shouldn't be ever doing business with you. It should be their company to your company and no individuals in between. And a lot of you just don't spend the money to get set up right, do the right documentation, get the right lawyers to put these paperwork together, get the right operating agreements or even the note agreements on repayment. So make sure you do this right. Some of the best clients that I have, really, really great clients who became multimillionaires, use title companies and through escrow accounts actually track the transparency of the money because then you've got a third party in there. There are asset managers that you can hire. Again, it's an extra fee to the project, but it keeps the transparency at a third party reach than just having you manage it all. So don't commingle. It's not your money and don't go buy anything personal with it or you're going to get in a lot of trouble. So if you have any questions, I love this topic. I'm here five days a week, but Ask Laurel is 24-7. So make sure you're asking questions, making requests at asklaurel.com and we'll be back tomorrow.